Welcome back. Next up, we have Bree from Darwinia, who's going to discuss the bridge hub between the Polkadot ecosystem and external networks. Darwinia is a decentralized cross-chain bridge built on Substrate, which is the bridge hub a bridge hub between the Polkadot ecosystem and external networks. Darwinia has recently successfully connected to the Rococo parachain testnet and aims to provide a safe general bridge solution connecting to Polkadot, Ethereum, and other chains, uh, in, uh, enabling cross-chain DeFi applications, NFT trading, games, and more. Welcome, Bree. Thank you for having me today. Glad to present today's Polkadot Decoded 2021. Darwinia is building Web3 bridges on Substrate, providing the safest, heterogeneous cross-chain solutions connecting Polkadot, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chains, and different blockchain networks. So I would say Darwinia is like the bridge hub connecting Polkadot and external networks. So today I'm going to walk you through why we're building Web3 bridges and how to build finally something the community and users care the most, what to bridge build with Web3 bridges, what are some cross-chain bridge use cases and applications? So first, let's look at why building Web3 bridges. Let's dive this question into several branches. What is Web3? What are bridges and what benefits can bridges bring to the Polkadot ecosystem? Why are decentralized bridges important to the Web3 future? What is Web3? The Web2 wave was largely driven by three core layer innovations, social, mobile, and cloud. While the Web2 wave is still bearing fruits, we're also seeing a next paradigm shift to internet applications, Web3. Web3 is a great leap forward from Web2 to permissionless, open, trusted networks. Our data identity assets are our own securely from a trusted third party. In line with this vision, Polkadot was created with the belief that no single chain can do everything and the future is multi-chain. So having understanding what is Web3, what are bridges? Think about, do you hold Ethereum? I would like to harvest the latest opportunities on Polkadot DeFi. Absolutely, right? But there's a bit of issue in the crypto space. Two different blockchains can't really talk to each other. If you make an Ethereum transaction, the Polkadot blockchain won't be able to know it happened. So cross-chain bridge is such a connection enable the flow of tokens and arbitrary data from one blockchain to another one. Cross-chain bridges wire these world gardens together into more global common marketplace for data, decision-making, financial, economically strong services on multi-chain ecosystems. So that's why we need cross-chain bridges for the Web3 future. With the big picture, specifically, let's look at what benefits can bridges bring to the Polkadot ecosystem. Well, Ethereum gas is surging because everyone would like a fast pass on a congested data highway. Leverage by the cross-chain Darwinia bridge, Polkadot can provide several thick scaled highway uh, through connecting different parachain networks while still tapping into the Ethereum liquidity. For example, Ethereum Polkadot cross-chain bridges can enable cross-chain DeFi composability and wider NFT adoption. But why do people like to connect to Polkadot? Take DeFi as an example, what's unique about Polkadot DeFi? Well, definitely I have to mention Substrate. Substrate free developers from writing a blockchain to building customized DeFi project at a reasonably cheap price uh, without customized uh, to restricted Ethereum resources. Different customized DeFi chains can deliver much more sophisticated features, which was not only supported by smart contract on Ethereum, largely driven those high value DeFi projects in large scale applications, which is critical in realizing the Web3 internet of blockchains. So what are some crossing bridges? Basically, hash time lock, custodian model, chain relay, and collateral based solutions, and custodial bridges was mostly implemented. However, think about when we need to call our friends out, we go to Facebook, a centralized institution to pass messages to our friends, but this isn't the way the world, world was meant to be. Blockchain, on each and every blockchain, Bitcoin or 
or Ethereum, this old trust relate uh, old order has been obsoleted. But when it comes to cross-chain interoperability, everything seems to go back to start point. So actually, we're facing the question, fighting or creating. But Mr. Fowler has said, you never change things by fighting the exact existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. For these custodial bridges, they are now distributing middlemen uh, claiming to be decentralized, but distribution doesn't mean decentralization. Our Polkadot founder, Gavin, Dr. Gavin Wood, also said, probably the most expensive asset would be trust. So let's see that these custodial bridges heavily relied on trust. The trust the cost of these bridges would be extremely high. Therefore, we need decentralized bridges. And we feel like the slogan retail parity hat, more truth, less trust, exactly describes what we have been building, a decentralized cross-chain bridge. After now, hopefully have got an idea of why we're building Web3 bridges. So let's look at how to achieve that. When we're doing cross-chain asset transfer, we're facing uh, two major challenges. Uh, through the process, you have to first lock your asset on regional chain, like say Darwinia, and then mint the same amount of target chain, map tokens on our target chain, like say Ethereum. During this process, we're actually facing two major challenges. Number one, how to control the lock and unlock of assets in a trustless way. And number two, how to verify the crossing transaction in a trustless way. How to build web three bridges. Darwinia has made a real difference in solving these challenges, from trust relay to choose based. Darwinia chain relay actually upgraded the traditional chain relay solution, uh, which requires relaying each and every block, which is not economically feasible. For now, Darwinia chain relay is a super light client upgrading a Merkle mountain range technology optimistic verification game to achieve relay on demand and to make sure each confirmed new block is aware of the history chain state. So essentially, with such efficient chain relay, we're able to achieve uh, relay on demand uh, only triggered by cross-chain requester. With such efficient Darwinian chain, re chain relay, we're going to build decentralized cross-chain bridges across Turing com complete blockchain networks. So now I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Say if you're going to transfer tokens from Darwinia to Ethereum, first you have to lock your tokens on Darwinia and the backing contract will lock your asset, which solves the challenges of how to lock or unlock your asset in a trustless way. And then the light client deployed on target chain Ethereum will do the verification, cross-chain verification job, which solves the challenges of how to verify your crossing transaction in a trustless way. And then the issuing contract will check the Darwinian relay deployed on Ethereum to confirm the transaction to issue the same amount of MAP tokens on your target chain Ethereum. Among all these above, another exciting advantage of Darwinian bridge is supporting the cross-chain transfer of NFTs. Say if you're calling for frequent multi sig only for transferring your crypto kitties, the fee bearer would be really high. Also, for those collateral based solutions which highly rely on price fee, there's no general standard to determine the value of NFTs. So, in general, Darwinia Bridge has solved the challenges of trust, cost, and user experience. Up to now, Darwinia Ethereum Golden Gate Bridge has successfully, successfully opened. So, basically, for now, users transfer their assets between Ethereum and Darwinia through this wormhole portal. And the user interface looks like this. Finally, something the community and our user care about much is that what to build with Web3 Bridges. What are some use cases and applications? First, for DeFi use cases like, say, DAX and aggregator on Ethereum can upgrade into a cross-chain version. Users can trade um, native DOC and Kusama, those Polkadot ecosystem assets on Uniswap, not just de derived derivatives or rev tokens. 
One great thing about this is how it makes sure the value consistency on different chains. Also, the security risk of, of users also get reduced as well. On the Polkadot side, we are directly able to build cross-chain decks like Subswap, uh, supporting MetaMask as well. For decentralized lending, uh, for now, uh, crypto collaterals on Maker are mainly Ethereum Polkadot or Ethereum uh, ecosystem assets. Uh, leveraged by cross-chain bridge, quality Polkadot ecosystem asset like DOT and Kusama can be MakerDAO collaterals. Currently, different public chains are building their own DeFi stack, like say a Calum Polkadot, a Maker on Ethereum, Kava on Cosmos. But if a one project is going to lead the project should be decided by wider market competitions um, on various networks, but not just benefiting from the monopoly on one single chain. Cross-chain bridges exactly remove such uh, physical blockchain isolations. Without these walls, value can fr uh, flow freely to the most superior De DeFi hub. Plus for users, they can make their investment decisions with more compatibilities. In general, cross-chain bridges will stimulate and activ activate the whole DeFi system and inject new energy to the crypto world. And stablecoin is another critical use case of cross-chain bridges. Uh, for now, most uh, stablecoins are USDTs, basically public, uh, basically issue different versions of USDTs on different chains. But I would say decentralized stablecoin like DAI should be the future of stablecoin. But DAI generation for now heavily relies on Ethereum uh, ecosystem assets and within short time it's unlikely to directly issue Polkadot version of Ether. So I would say DAI should play an indispensable role in the Polkadot DeFi system according to its large user adoption, not just on Ethereum. So cross-chain bridge will play a critical role in bringing DAI uh, from Ethereum to Polkadot ecosystem. For NFT use cases, uh, the gas fee of minting and trading NFTs on Ethereum is still extremely harsh. So many uh, more and more outstanding NFT artists and DeFi and the DeFi Plus NFT projects are creating and building more and more on Kusama and Polkadot. But we have to admit that um, the NFT market on Ethereum, like say OpenSea, still capture the largest traffic. So leveraged by Darwinia cross-chain bridge, um, NFT market like OpenSea can upgrade into a cross-chain version, support native Polkadot and Kusama uh, ecosystem um, NFTs, like say the Kusama version of CryptoPunks called Substropunk. So expected to be a new primary layer for NFTs. Um, outstanding artists and NFT projects uh, will enjoy the ease of coming to Polkadot while still integrating their multi-chain users. NFT Metaverse is pretty trending recently, right? Um, but one question, what's the difference between the NFT Metaverse between the visual game world we're seeing right now? Uh, take game as an example. We're not really own our visual assets in traditional games and these game assets can be reusing other games. But one remarkable feature of the NFT metaverse is we really do own our visual assets and these visual worlds are actually wired together. So Evolution Land is such an NFT metaverse. It's a cross-chain game with 26 continents built on different blockchain networks like say Binance, Smart Chain, Polkadot, Ethereum connected by Darwinia cross-chain bridge. So basically users earn their profits through our DeFi plus uh, NFT mining systems. Three questions, where to mine? Users can pay multi-chain assets such as uh, DOT, Ether, DAI, Kusama, BNB to purchase a piece of NFT land. What to mine? They can mine five different resources from the NFT land actually tokens. Um, and how to mine, users can put mining of puzzles and different mining tools like drills on the piece of NFT land. 
something more amazing about our evolution at land game five. Please look at the left illustration. Users can, can actually add a liquidity to the DeFi pools in the game. Uh, for example, for the trading pair would be uh, resources like gold mining from the land to dot trading pair. And let's look at the right illustration. The LP token can further synthesize into high level mining drills uh, with basic mining drill like iron drill. Um, also, users can enjoy the fun of uh, creating their own synthesis, trading, and mining strategies across different continents. Like, say, my continent on Ethereum, my land on Ethereum continent can produce more resources, but these resources can uh, can be traded for a better deal on Polkadot continent. So, I will definitely transfer these resources from Ethereum continent to Polkadot continent, leveraged by Darwinian cross chain bridge. So in general, Evolution Land is like a miniature of the Web3 multi-chain crypto world, but also an amazing playground. Um, also for a game, it is going to lower, um, reduce the user threshold. They're going to naturally gain an uh, educated sense of what is cross-chain technology, DeFi, and NFT just through playing the game. Finally, except DeFi blockchain game and NFT use cases, the most important use case is for the whole Polkadot ecosystem. Darwinian now is also going to participate in the Polkadot perishing auction to become, to striving to become the bridge hub to all perishing projects. One use case would be um, users are able to pay directly Ethereum ecosystem assets to use our parachain services, like say, uh, DeFi on Akala, Confidential Computer Cloud on Fala, and Decentralized Storage on Crust. These parachain projects won't uh, need to build these walls on their own, but focus on building on their customized business and applications. Thus, I expanded the Polkadot community and flourished the whole Polkadot ecosystem. So for now, we have been striving to be the best cross-chain bridge provider, and a lot of projects have been on board to uh, integrate our Darwinia cross-chain bridge. Finally, just a brief update of Darwinia. Um, as a friend of Polkadot and Substrating Polkadot uh, light paper, we have been actively preparing for the Polkadot Perishing Auction. Our main act, Darwinia, is going for the Polkadot Perishing Auction, and our Canary Network Crab is going for the Kusama Perishing Auction. And we have won the auction test on Polkadot with Coco and successfully relayed the first Robson Ethereum block header from Polkadot to Ricoco, which means uh, marking the first step connecting Polkadot and Ethereum via Darwinia. And we have also completed the first cross-chain transfer. So I guess that's for today. For more Darwinia updates and our recent progress on uh, Polkadot Parishing Auctions, definitely join our community, uh, Twitter, Telegram, and WeChat. So I guess that's for today. Thank you for having me and very glad to speak at today's Great Polkadot Decoded 2021. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bree. I think we have time for just one question. You're chock full of uh, detail in that presentation. I think you answered most of them. The one though that I didn't see in there was, uh, that was a question asked in the chat was, um, will it be possible to make bridges between say, like a ETH layer two, which where a lot of the activity on Ethereum looks to be moving and Polkadot, is that gonna in the roadmap as well? Right, we're definitely going to uh, bridge more publishing ecosystems. For layer two, we have to look at a consensus model. Uh, for now, with the experience of the Ethereum bridge, we're easy to uh, bridge those public chains or uh, blockchain ecosystems with a similar consensus model. So. Uh, if we look at those uh, layer two um, blockchains for them with similar consensus models, we're going to definitely bridge these ecosystems together to Polkadot first. Amazing. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon and check in on your progress.